Welcome to Mission Jovem, my dear, my dear friends, thank you for tuning in. Today we celebrate 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Bienvenidos al programa de Mission Joven, estamos en el 29 Domingo del Tiempo Ordinario. We're going to proclaim today the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verses 10 to 11. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 10 to 11. Y vamos al programa de hoy, Isaías, capítulo 53, versículo del 10 al 11. En el nombre del Padre, del Son, del Holy Spirit, en el nombre del Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo. Amén. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por todos los pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. En el nombre del Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo. En el nombre del Padre, del Son, del Holy Spirit. Amén. <coughs> Isaías 53, verses 10 to 11. The Lord says, It was my will that he should suffer. His death was a sacrifice to bring forgiveness. And so he will see his descendants. He will live a long life. And through him, my purpose will succeed. After a life of suffering, he will again have joy. He will know that he did not suffer in vain. My devoted servant, with whom I am pleased, will bear the punishment of many, and for his sake I will forgive them. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Isaías capítulo 53, versículo del 10 al 11. Isaías 53, 10 al 11. El Señor quiso oprimirlo con el sufrimiento, y puesto que él se entregó por el sacrificio por el pecado, tendrá larga vida, y llegará a ver a sus descendientes. Por medio de él tendrán éxito los planes del Señor, tendrán éxito. Después de tanta aflicción verá la luz, y quedará satisfecho al haberlo. Y a saberlo, el justo siervo del Señor librará a muchos, porque hará con la maldad de ellos. Padre del Señor, Padre de Dios, alabamos Señor. So in this reading we see the connection of the suffering servant. First of all, not only he, he will be incarnate on a, of born of a virgin, but also as as his ministry continues, it will be point, it will come to a point where he will suffer, and he will suffer for the for the ransom of many. And it tells that, that through his descendants, he will find joy. His descendants will find joy on, this, on the suffering servant. And it says also that through this suffering, God will forgive the whole human race. And so anyone, anyone in, in the whole entire history of the whole human race has been forgiven by God through the sacrifice of God, of Jesus Christ. And it says to the, to the servant, that after a life, a life of suffering, he will go and have joy, and he will, do, he will not know what did, that he will know what did, that he did not suffer in vain. So that's very important that the suffering servant knows that his suffering meant some, means something, or meant something to the whole entire human race. It means a lot to the believers, because we know that the, the suffering servant did not suffer in vain. Why? Because we know that the, the suffering servant, on the contrary, opened the gates of heaven to to the whole entire human race, those who, those who um, follow him, who follow him and, and follow his ministry and believe in him and, and give, their, give their life for the purpose of the suffering servant, we know that we have, a, we have a, an award, put it that way, in heaven. It says, my devoted servant with whom I am pleased will bear the punishment of many and for his sake I will forgive them. So he's talking about the, the the the, the 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 original sin committed by our by, our, by, by Adam and Eve, yes, they committed sin and they had to be that this this completely destroyed destroyed the plans of the, the plans of Adam and Eve to live in heaven. So they were they were evicted from from uh, from the garden, and now because of because of the because of the sin, and every human being will bear will bear that sin but it was even it's been forgiven forgiven by the sacrifice of the suffering servant and what i like to relay is on the on the gospel of john chant in the gospel of john chapter 10 verse 17 it says that the suffering servant it says the following the father loves me because i am willing to give up my life in order that i may receive it back again no one takes my life away from me i give it up on my own free will I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. The word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be to God. So we see that the suffering servant fulfills 
that Jesus Christ fulfills this, the, the, the prophecy given by the prophet Isaiah about the suffering servant. Because it says here, after he suffered, he will have joy and he will succeed. He will succeed, meaning that after his long suffering and excruciating pain, he will be redeemed by resurrecting. And because he's going to resurrect, he, he, will, he will go back, back to the Father. And in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, chapter, chapter 10, verse 7, again, reaffirms what the prophet Isaiah just mentioned. It says, Hebrews, 10, chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, it says, Then I said, this is, this is Jesus talking, Then I said, Here I am to do your will, O God, just as is written of me in the book of the law. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. So, in summary, we see that the, the, that the suffering servant will go through the biggest punishment to carry all the sins committed by the whole entire human race for the sake of forgiveness, for, for the sake of forgiveness from the Father, so then, so then the whole entire human race will be redeemed of their sins and eventually, eventually given the opportunity to reach heaven. But again, it's, it's, about, it's about the suffering of the servant that opens the gate of heaven so that all of us can finally reach home. According to God's grace, and God decides exactly whether we end up in heaven, whether we end up in purgatory, or we ourselves end up in hell. So we got three places to go, either heaven, purgatory, or hell. Amen. Vemos aquí en Isaías 53, versículo 10 al 11, nos está hablando del, del, del sufrimiento del, del siervo, que va a pasar por un momento de dolor, un momento de castigo muy fuerte, cargando los pecados de toda la humanidad. Sí. Y dice que su sufrimiento no será en vano. Porque está diciendo que los descendientes de, 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 este, de, este, de este siervo sufrido, de siervo sufrido, los descendientes encontrarán en él la paz, la alegría, la, sobre todo el, el, el consuelo de saber de que hay alguien que Dios, que Dios mandó para ser encarnado en una, en una virgen para que sea el Señor y el Rey de Reyes y el Señor de Señores. Y dice aquí que esos planes serán éxito del Señor. Quiere decir que el pecado original cometido por Adán, Adán y Eva. Sí, desde el principio, tiene, tiene, tiene que haber, ellos tenían la capacidad de vivir en, 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 el, en el paraíso, pero al pecar fueron desterrados del, del jardín del Edén y por lo tanto, ahora Jesús, el siervo tiene que venir a la tierra, tiene que ser encarnado una virgen, venir, dar su predicación y sufrir y morir. Y ese, y ese, 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 ese morir hará que el pecado se borre de los primeros padres y para que Dios nos dé su perdón y eventualmente nos dé la oportunidad de que este siervo abra las puertas del cielo. Entonces vamos a ir que en, en, en Juan capítulo, en Juan capítulo uh, 10, versículo 17, nos va a hablar de que nos habla justamente la, el cumplimiento de esta profecía. Nos dice así, 18, el Padre me ama porque yo doy mi vida para volver a recibir. Nadie me quita la vida, sino que yo la doy por mi propia voluntad. Tengo el derecho de darla y de volver a recibirla. Esto es lo que me a mi Padre. Palabra del Señor, gloria a ti, Señor Jesús. Vemos que este es un mandato del Padre, que va, el, siervo, el siervo sufriente va a pasar, va a pasar por, por un castigo eh, inhumano, muy fuerte. Se hace hombre como nosotros para sufrir, pero a final de cuentas el Padre lo va a levantar. Y justamente en el, el Cártelo de Hebreos, capítulo 10, también dice lo mismo. De, de otra manera, dice aquí Jesús hablando, dice así, Hebreos 10, 7. Hebreos 10, 7 dice, entonces, entonces dije, Jesucristo hablando, Aquí estoy tal como está escrito de mí en el libro para hacer tu voluntad, oh Dios. Para Dios te le vamos a ir. Entonces vamos a ver que Jesús es el cumplimiento de esta profecía y que todo se va a hacer de acuerdo a la voluntad de Dios. Que Él va a sufrir, que va a pasar momentos de tribulación, pero es para redimirnos a toda, a toda la humanidad. Ahora, tenemos ya, a, como este, 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 este siervo sufriente va a abrir las puertas del cielo, pues ahora, de, ahora depende, de la, por medio de la gracia de Dios, depende, ya, depende no de nosotros, sino de Dios, decidir si vamos a ir al cielo, o, o si vamos a ir al purgatorio, o si vamos a llegar al infierno. Hay tres lugares donde vamos a quedar, cielo, purgatorio o infierno. Entonces, es lo que Jesucristo habló en, en la tierra, y por ejemplo, por eso que todos nosotros tenemos, tenemos que tener, este, estar preparados en el corazón, de amar a Jesucristo con todos, con todos nuestra, nuestros pensamientos, con nuestro, nuestras fuerzas y buscar de él a diario. ¿Y cómo lo cómo sale a, a diario? A través, a través del Evangelio, a través de los sacramentos, a través de la Santa Eucaristía, a través de, de, del estudio de la Palabra de Dios. Es importante que nos llenemos de Jesucristo para que nuestro corazón 
quede completamente transformado en una, en una, una metanoia que haga el Papa Juan Pablo II y seamos cada día más, más, más buenos devotos católicos. So in this, in this reading, to summarize once again, we see the suffering of the, of the, the, of the servant that whose, whose pain, whose excruciating pain, who is about to undergo through the biggest punishment for the sake of the human race. But at the end, at the end, he will, he will reach heaven, he will, he will be sitting, sitting next to the throne of the Father, and then he will be the good judge. And as, as, Christ, as Christ is the Son of God, he, by him opening the gates of heaven, we, we, have, we are to act upon, upon his example. And by, by, by following the example of Christ, we know that all our mind, soul, and spirit will be connected to him. And so how do we do that? Well, through, through by connecting every day through the study of the gospel. So every morning when you wake up, you can connect to the gospel. Uh, there are many, many priests out there who give the gospel, the daily gospel, um, or daily readings and the reflection on it. Or by actually reading the word of God on yourself every day and meditate on it and apply it to the best of your abilities. Also by, by attending the, the, sacrament of the, the, the sacraments of the, of the Catholic faith and also by attending, by attending the Holy Mass. So Christ is opening the gates of heaven to us, but we, do, we are to do our job as well to make sure that we are following on his path so we do, not, we do not deviate from it. And if we do, then we have the sacrament of reconciliation. So Jesus Christ forgives our sins through his servants. So it's important that in this reading uh, we understand that this was prophesied in the book of Isaiah and it became to fulfillment in the Gospel of John and of course in the book of Hebrews in the whole Bible Christ is prefigured about his suffering and his redemption for the whole entire human race. Amen. Vemos aquí una vez más que el sufrimiento de este siervo tendrá su éxito en qué sentido que tendremos la oportunidad de estar con él algún día reunidos de acuerdo a la voluntad y la gracia de Dios. Siempre todo depende si lleguemos al cielo, al purgatorio o al infierno. Lo importante es de que estemos siempre conectados con Cristo y que sigamos su ejemplo y que siempre sepamos que Cristo está presente en todos lados y en todo, todo tipo de personas y que, no, y que debemos dar la oportunidad y abrir las puertas del corazón para que ellos también tengan un encuentro genuino, sincero, honesto con Cristo. So we are to open our, ourselves to, to God and let the people know that they are welcome back to the church and that we are here we are with open arms to receive them and to to uh, build community with them so that they too become uh, we have a a very intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. Dios les bendiga y que tengan todos buenas noches. Hasta luego.